Hi, welcome to another video where I attempt to solve the Telegraph's daily cryptic crossword. I've started doing this about two weeks ago now and I'm really enjoying making these videos. So hopefully if you've seen any of the previous ones, you've enjoyed them as well and you've come back for more. Um, basically, it'll be a step-by-step -step solve, a bit of a walkthrough aimed at beginners mainly. Although if you're used to cryptic crossers, you might enjoy the watch anyway. Um, but let's dive straight in. Um, just before I start, I say this at the start of every video. If you're new to cryptic crosswords, one thing to remember is that pretty much every clue has got the same similar structure. Um, cryptic crossword clues have mainly got two parts in them. There's a definition part which indicates the answer. Not a strict, necessarily a strict definition that you'll find in the dictionary, but it will indicate the answer. And then there'll be another part of the clue that's some sort of wordplay that also gets you to the answer as well. So as I go through the clues, we'll try and identify which is the definition, which is the wordplay. But another thing to remember is that the definition always happens either at the beginning or the end of the clue as well. So, um, okay, let's get going and see, see how far we get. Okay. So one across, right winger after drinks makes up a tail. So immediately you're thinking, where's the definition here and where is the wordplay? Um, what you're looking for really are um, words that can indicate some sort of wordplay. So any word that's to do with position or place that can indicate wordplay, like this word here, after. Um, this could imply like a word for a right winger comes after a word for drinks. And then that would make the definition probably like a tail maybe or tail so this wordplay makes up a tail so we're looking for a definition of tail now right winger very often um can be coded as tory and after drinks is implying some sort of plural so we're looking for two words five and five so i think the second word is definitely story so we're looking for a a word for drinks which would include this s um and then tory afterwards that will give us um a word for a tale so some sort of story uh, i'm trying to think what that could be right now i can't think um not 100 percent sure yet but let's let's go on to one down and maybe we'll with a few other letters here we might be able to get get one across so one down indication of vice involving head of government so again as i mentioned we're looking for definition and we're looking for wordplay so the definition is either here like indication or indication of vice or it could be here it could mean head of government or government and then the wordplay is also going to get us to that answer as well and again i like looking at words like i said before to do with um position but also looking at verbs that happen in the sentence somewhere especially ones ending in ing because they tend to inc um, indicate some sort of action that's happening to the words in the wordplay so here we have indication of vice involving head of government this word involving is indicating some sort of wordplay here i think it's um you know in some way a word for vice is involving the head of government and the head of when you see head of or tail of in a in a cryptic clue it typically means like the first letter or the last letter of the word that follows so we've probably got a word for vice with the first letter of government the g and the whole thing means an indication so i think this is sign i put it in the right place to start with so you can see a vice is a sin and that's got, it involves the head of G. It involves the head of, sorry, government, which is a G. So it gets sign. Let's try a 10 across. Envious politician. Now, at the beginning, I said all cryptic cross, or most cryptic crossword clues are made up of two parts, wordplay and definition. That's true in maybe 95% of the cases. There are a couple of exceptions to that, and this is one of them. Um... Especially when you just get two words, it's likely to be what's known as a double definition. So both words are a definition. So both words mean the answer. Um, so a word for envious and a word for politician can be green. 
So you see, there's no wordplay here. It's just two definitions giving us the word green. Okay. Right, let's try um, two down. Covered with weeds throughout. Gardener gutted, worried now. So here we're looking for, again, working for the wordplay. Um, does it mean covered with weeds or does it mean now or worried now? Um, there's some words here that, that are indicating wordplay to me. So this word gutted. So when you got something, you remove the insides from it. So we're probably taking the insides from Gardner and just leaving the, the G and the R. So we're taking out these letters and just leaving G and R. And worried is also very often used as an anagram indicator. So we're worrying some letters. We're probably worrying the letters of, of now. So we have GR and then an anagram of now. Um, and so that means that the, the definition is probably covered with weeds. And something that's covered with weeds is overgrown. Which would fit with what I thought the wordplay was there. So we have the GR of the gutted gardener. And then an anagram of now. So what we're looking to confirm now is over. So does three out mean over? If something is three out, this can be over it. Yeah, that looks that looks right. So the definition is covered with weeds. Um, if you notice here, this uh, hyphen, that usually you can ignore most punctuation. It's just there to make the the surface clue, you know, the read better, the actual the actual sentence of the clue. Um, Another thing to note, obviously, you know, a good setter will try and make the actual clue itself like completely throw you off the scent of what they're actually talking about. So sometimes they'll use words that are spelled the same and pronounced differently. Sometimes they'll use um, punctuation to make you pause as you read so then you don't necessarily see the meaning of what they're looking for. Um, we might come across some of those later. I'll point them out. So let's go back to uh, one across. Um, Right winger after drinks makes up a tale. So this is looking like short story now. So what have we got here? We've got the right winger, which is the Tory. And after drinks, um, a short is a drink, so plural is short. Short story is a tale. Okay. Let's try a three down. Dance, beat, good, not half. Five um, letters. So here, what are we looking for? Um, if dance is the definition, then we're looking for beat, good, not half. Now, not half is indicating we're not using half of a word. So probably taking ha not using half of good, which would be go. We have obviously the T and the N here. This looks like tango, doesn't it? So it means dance. And where did we get tan from? Well, another word for beat is to tan. So tan with go gives us dance. So this is a, a, a charade clue. They're called charade because they're basically, you build them up from different parts of the of the um, clue. Different words in the clue, take different parts of them and then you put them all together. Okay, so it's tango. Right, we're making reasonable progress here. Um, let's see. Sampled first drop of ouzo inside and drank to someone's health. Where do you think the definition in the wordplay is here? Remember what I said before. Let's look for let's look for words and indicate something to do with position. For example, um, so we have first here, and we also have inside. And then we have a, this word and is very often what they call a link word. So between the word play and the definition, you they, sometimes they, you are allowed in the rules of cryptic crosswords to have a link word. This can be for or from, quite often and, sometimes is, sometimes apostrophe s. So that sort of links between the word play and the definition or vice versa. Um, so based on these words of first and inside, then... It looks like the definition here is drank to someone's health. So, um, first drop of ouzo could be an O. Um, and it's inside something. It's inside a word for sampled. So we have sampled here. First drop of ouzo is an O inside it. 
and it gives us drink to someone's health. So if you sample something, you've tasted it, put an O in it, and you've toasted, which is drinking to someone's health. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, five down. Extremely rare bike to use over again. Um, now here, extremely is a very common wordplay word. What does it mean? It means use the extremes of the next word or the previous word. So the extremes being the first and the last letter. So if we use the first and the last letter here of rare, we get R-E. So we have the R here, so it makes me confident. We have the E. And then we have bike. And so that would mean that the clue would mean to use over again. So we're beginning with R-E. To use over again with a bike there would be recycle. Okay. Um, let's try, well, we have quite a lot of letters here from 12 across. Let's try that. Skeptic acting so ridiculously. Um, this is an anagram clue. You can see that reasonably clearly. We got a word like ridiculously. So words like ridiculously or upset or mixed up. So basically what we're saying is the letters of acting and so are ridiculous and they're being, they're being messed up a bit and it's going to mean a skeptic. And if you look at the letters that we got here, that word is jumping out at me is agnostic, which means skeptic. Okay, so there's the anagram clue, anagrams. One strategy you can do if you're new to these is basically quickly scan through. I've done this in a couple of previous videos. I quickly scan through the, the list of clues and look for the anagram clues because they tend to be the ones that are more easily identifiable. And then you'll have some letters then to help you with working out the wordplay from, you know, and other clues. Right, so where we go, um, where do we go? 11 across. Get to know when positive. Get to know when positive. It's hard to know here what the, what the definition is. It's either get to know or it's positive. Um, we have a, we have at the beginning here, we have a, an A. And when, I've seen this a few times, when quite often is coded as as. So I think this is as, which makes me think that the, the definition then is get to know. So we're looking for wordplay with when and positive. So literally a word for when and then another word for positive. So um, I think this is ascertain. As in as with certain. Yeah, so there's no, there's no like indicator word there for um for the wordplay. Um, it's basically a straightforward get a uh, definition and then building the the word from parts of the remainder remainder of the wordplay. That makes sense. So we got the as and the certain. Right. Um. Let's try nine down, will we? Um. George Martin for one mixed up. Record. Um, so, I mean, George Martin is a producer of the Beatles, right? And when you see something like for one or for example or say, what, what the, remember at the beginning I said the clues are either, you know, they're made up of a definition in some wordplay, but the definition isn't necessarily something you'll find in the dictionary. If you look up producer, which I think is what the answer is. If you look that up in the dictionary, you're not going to find George Martin. But George Martin is a producer. So what they're saying here is, you know, look for an example. George Martin is an example of one of these. And you get there by, this is the wordplay then, here, mixed up and record. So mixed anagram indicator. So we're doing an, having an anagram of up record, which gives us producer. Okay, um, will we try, let's try seven time. True leader of men in field. So, what do you think this means? Does it mean true? 
leader of men in field then would be the would be the um the wordplay. Um so leader of men would be maybe an M and then it's within a word for field. And the whole thing means true. Could that be what we're looking at here? Or could it mean field and we're looking for a word that means true with the leader of men with an M? So what do you think? I think that this is realm. So I think field is a definition here. So we have a word for true, which is real, with leader of men, M, and it gives us realm. Yeah, I'm happy, happy with that. Let's try 13 across. Um, mannequin's exposed hand. So what have we got here? Have we got, again, this is a double definition. So we have this little link here. The As I said to you before, sometimes you get link words. So we have a, a definition of mannequin. I mean, just based on the letters we got here, it looks this looks like dummy, doesn't it? So how do we get the dummy? Well, a mannequin is a dummy. And it's also an exposed hand. I think in bridge is the dummy hand. You get a lot of bridge references and crosswords. Um, and so this apostrophe S is purely an, this is purely a link between the two definitions. This is a double definition. Giving us dummy. Okay. Let's try six across. Golf club, Irish one, not English. So how can we identify some wordplay here? When you get words like not, Usually means like take, take something away, um, and English is very often abbreviated just to an e. Um, there's certain rules about what can be abbreviated and what can't. I mean, it has to be exist as an abbreviation. Um, so you want to look at maybe Chambers Dictionary that will give you a list of lots of lots of abbreviations. You can check if something is an abbreviation or not there. Um, so this implies that this maybe is the wordplay and this will be the uh, the definition. So a golf club could be an iron. I'm just thinking of Irish and one. So IR for Irish. And then one, but without the ink, without the E, will give us iron. Um, meaning golf club. Okay. Um, let's try it down. A new name in... New York, say, in a government seen as overprotective. Um, this is nanny state. Now how do we get there with the wordplay? So that, that, the the definition there then is. Um, a government seen as overprotective, isn't it? Um, so a new name in New York. We have the abbreviated, New York can be abbreviated to NY. So we have the N and the Y here. And within that, we have a new name. We have ANN. We even have AN actually. But, um, and then say here is literally state. And then, so that's saying, in a government seen as protective. So, a government seen as protective is a definition. In is a, one of these link words between the wordplay and the definition. Okay? Um, and this sort of question mark implies, sometimes it doesn't mean anything. Um, but it implies it's maybe, a, like it's, again, it's not a strict definition, but it's maybe a uh, sort of a, something in the colloquial way of saying something. So I think this is where, where the nanny state comes in. Okay. Will we try, will we try 21 across? Um, fruit with a soft cheese, no ta. So just looking at this, I think this probably means fruit because ta, I can't think no ta. As a definition, 
can't think of what that would be. Um, so if we if it's fruit, and we get to fruit with this word play, so with here is a um, a link word again. So the word play is a soft cheese no ta. Um, so it looks like we have A. A very often when you see it in a clue is literally you're putting it in A, um, especially if it's in the wordplay. So A soft, soft in music, soft and quiet um, are abbreviated to a P for piano. And now we're left with cheese. No ta. So this is a word for cheese, but we've removed a T and an A. So a cheese I can think of it ends would be ricotta. So if we take out the the T and the A, we end up with apricot, which is a fruit. So here we have the definition with the wordplay. Okay. Cool. Um let's try this one in. Perhaps Tommy. Troubled half hearted rapper and cook. Hmm. So what does perhaps mean? Perhaps very often implies like an example. So we're saying that Tommy is, so rather than it's being a, it's a definition, but it's rather than it being a strict definition, a bit like what we had before um, with, where was it? George Martin, for example. Now we're saying perhaps Tommy. So Tommy is an example of whatever this answer is. So now we have troubled, half-hearted rapper and cook. Trouble is implying an anagram because the letters of follower are troubled. Now we're doing half-hearted rapper and cook. Um, so what does half-hearted mean in this? It's some sort of anagram of rapper with cook. And the half hearted is referring to the rapper. So half a heart of, like the heart of rapper is PP, isn't it? So half hearted means just use one of the P's. So now we're looking for an anagram of, I suppose, R-A-P-E-R and cook. And it means, so this is, this is a, a Tommy. I immediately thought when I heard Tommy is of uh, the Who's. Rock opera, which is what this answer is. So you can see, perhaps Tommy. It's a loose definition, isn't it? Um, okay. Well, we try seventeen across. Um, passage right inside bar. So as I said before, we're looking for wordplay. We're looking for definition. What can indicate wordplay? Here's another one of these position words inside. So we're looking for right, which is very, very often purely um, abbreviated to an R. Inside a word for bar. So here's our R here. So we have a one, two, three, six letter word for bar. And the whole thing will mean um, passage. This is excerpt. Excerpt. Can I say that? So except, so you can see, so except, you know, if, if there's something, you borrow something, you accept it. Everything bar this, everything except that. With an R in it gives us except, which is a definition of a, which is a passage from a book. Okay, cool. Nice. Um, where are we going next? Shall we try 15 across, will we? A space left blank editor got round. Lots of bits and pieces in here. Um, editor is a word I'm looking at that's very, very often um, abbreviated to ED. So it's making me think potentially that this is the wordplay here A space left blank editor. And then got could be the link word and then or 
against even the got round could be the actual um yeah got round could be the definition. So that would mean ed would be at the end of this word. So we get the editor here now. Um, a like I say, let's put a in because it's likely to be part of it. And now we're looking for a word or a space left left blank. And it means got round. Oh, this is avoided. So a space left blank is a void with A and um, editor. Okay, do we get, that means got round, avoided. Good. Okay, now let's go 14 down. Tearful, my Rachel so distraught. If you watched a few of these so far, what, what do you think this could be? Where is the word play here? Any words that stick out as potential wordplay? If you're thinking distraught, then well done. Because you've just, this is definitely an, an anagram indicator. So that would mean the definition. Remember it said at the beginning or the end of the clue. The definition's at the beginning of the clue. So this will mean tearful. And it's an anagram of my Rachel so. Completely ignore the commas. They mean nothing in this. So a word that means tearful, that could be an anagram of that. I'm thinking lacrimose. Lacrimose. Nice. Okay, does that make sense? So we had the, here, distraught is the anagram indicator. Which means the definitions at the beginning. And there's the rest of the words are used in the anagram. Nice. Okay. Um. Let's try 19 across. Fellow leaving Cambridgeshire market town in pursuit of game. What do you think? Where's the anagram? Where's the wordplay? Um, remember those words I said before, either verbs ending in ing or some sort of um, place indicator here. We have a leaving here. So that's indicating wordplay to me. So it's probably a word for fellow, which very often is don, D-O-N. And it's leaving. Cambridgeshire markets market town so leaving a, a, a name of a, a market town in Cambridgeshire in the UK and it, this link word here means pursuit of game is what we're is a definition um, there's a town in Cambridgeshire called Huntington if we take off the D-O-N from the end of that we're left with hunting which is a pursuit of game okay nice obviously you need in some cases, you need a little bit of you know, general knowledge here or, or geographical knowledge as well to understand. If you didn't know what Cambridge or Market Town, that would be pretty hard to, to, to get to that clue, I think. You could maybe guess it from a pursuit of game. Um, okay, let's try 22 across. Cold husband in Scottish River having capsized boat. Um, I'm just looking at this cold is very often abbreviated to a C husband is very often abbreviated to an H um, which make me think that this is the, the word play here is cold husband and river having capsized and Scottish river having capsized and it means boat so we need to you know, find an A and a, a C and a H in here a Scottish river is the T if we capsize it as in we flip it, we end up with, and we put an a, a C and an H in there, we get yacht. So you can see the T with the C of cold and the H of husband. Okay, 23 down. Here, start of Carl at church. Another one that's indicating, remember, indicating the placement of something, so the start of. So we'll get the start of, um, Carl, because it's a C, and we've got the C here. So this this uh, this would mean that the definition is here. So start of Carl at church. This is one of those, as I mentioned before, like a charade. Do you say charade or charade? Charade, isn't it? A charade clue. So it's one or a word. Some clue sometimes it's called that. Clue you basically build it up from little aspects of the wordplay. So the start of Carl is a C. Then we have at, literally at, 
and then church, which is abbreviated to CH, which gives us catch. So if you hear something, you catch it. Okay. So again, there's no actual, you know, standout um, indicators there apart from the start of start of indicated the wordplay, but there was no manipulation of anything going on there. So it's literally just build it up one little bit at a time. Right. Let's try this one. Awfully upset, but is not in line with the others, question mark. So this is, um, this is looking like awfully is very often an anagram. So it's probably an anagram of what many letters do we need here? We need uh, three and two is five and four is nine. We have nine here. So that link word is is. So this means not in line with the others. So if you're not in line with the others, you're out of step. Yeah, it's quite a nice clue because there's some, obviously an upset foot would be out of step as well. So there's a bit of a um, sort of meta aspect to that there. It could be called an andlet maybe potentially, but it's definitely just an anagram of um, upset foot. Let's try 29 across. Repeat code word. This is a double definition. Yeah, there's no anagram. There's no like uh, wordplay indicator here. So it's a word for repeat. It's also a word for code word, which is echo. Very often used the code word, I suppose. Um, what's this now? Tendency of female to fall asleep. Um, what does this mean? We've got letters. It's a five and a three. Looks like it ends in off, doesn't it? To fall asleep or drift off. We got that purely from the sense of the the clue there. So that you know, drift off is the fall asleep is the definition. So tendency of female. We got the of female um, abbreviated to an F, and tendency is drift. Yeah. So ten tendency means another word for drift. Um, so again, it's another one of those, just build them up, Not don't have to manipulate too much anything, it's just using uh, synonyms and a bit of uh, abbreviation going on there. Right, let's try 20 down. Travel with wife, pay separately, question, no, pay separately, 2-5. Um, so this is... I think this is Go Dutch, isn't it? I mean, I got that mainly from the letter we already had. So travel is go. Um, with wife. Another word for your wife is Dutch, I suppose. I've heard that before. Um, so those two together means to pay separately. So the, so the definition is pay separately. Go. Cool. Let's try 24 across in. Where there's scope for a snapper to develop. Um, this question mark, this is like a, I think this is just like quite a whimsical cryptic definition here. A snapper very often is uh, referring to some sort of photographer. So where would a photographer develop? They develop stuff in the dark room, don't they? So I think this is dark room. I don't see particular wordplay. It's purely a cryptic definition. So trying to be a hidden sort of definition here. That's where that one comes from. Because again, it sort of breaks the um breaks that rule set at the beginning as one of the exceptions. So it's not necessarily a definition in wordplay. Sometimes the definition and the wordplay are one and the same. And, and sometimes there's a cryptic definition, which is what this one is. <clears throat> Um, we try, let's try 30 across. To see this fairground attraction, 
good publican goes by coach. Um, so to see this fairground attraction, good publican goes by coach. Where do you think the the word play is here? I mean, the one thing that's given to me is this by. That usually means next to. Um, so I think the I think this part, the good publican, is the wordplay. Good very often is um, abbreviated to G. Um, coach I've seen as train. This is oh yeah, and it's a fairground attraction. I think this is ghost train. So we have the G from good. And then we have a host, the publican. Another word for a publican is a host. And, and that's next to you, as in goes by, train. So it's next to coach. So, which is train. And to see this fairground attraction. So to see this is like a, in order to see this, we have to do this, we have to do this uh, wordplay. So fairground attraction is the definition. Um, what have we got now? 25 down. I, during break, have another go at paper. So again, we're looking for what's the wordplay, what's the definition, anything that indicates some sort of wordplay. I think this word during can do that. So we have a letter I, during, break, during a word for break, like inside a word for break. And the whole clue then would mean have another go at paper. So when you have another go at a paper, you reset it, don't you, if it's a test. And we have the I of here, and it's during a break, which is a rest. And giving us a definition, have another go at paper. Cool. Right, 28 across, what have we got? Chat with climbers, finally going to summit. Do you see any potential wordplay indicators here? Um, finally is one. So what's that indicating? The last, that's right, take the last letter of a word. So we'll take the last letter of climbers, S. We have the S here. So that's the beginning of the word play there. Climbers finally going to summit. So the word, so the definition then is chat. Chat with or chat. Um, so another word for summit is peak. And with the S from the end of climbers, we get speak to mean chat with or chat. 26 down, hide family beneath roof of synagogue. What does this one mean, do you think? Um, again, remember I said about the position, look at the, here's a position word, beneath. So what's beneath? Family is beneath roof of synagogue. This is the wordplay then, isn't it? Family beneath roof of synagogue is the wordplay. So this means hide. We've got K and N here. So family is looking like kin. Um, beneath roof of synagogue. The roof of the synagogue, the word synagogue, the roof, I suppose the top of it is an S. Skin. And that means hide, as in like the hide of a, of a cow or some animal. The skin is hide. Okay. Nice. So that's purely like again, look for those position words that give it away the word word play a lot. Right, we're down to the last clue. Um a move not entirely suitable. So what's happening here? The A is we have an A here, so it's is this indicating the wordplay somehow? We have another word not as well, not entirely. Not entirely. So maybe it means suitable. The definition is suitable. We have an A. So we're looking for a word for move. Not entirely. So, um, a word for move, but not the whole word. <clears throat> um, looking at the grid here, I think this is apropos. Oh yeah, cool. Um, let's go back to the puzzle. So we have, how do we get that? We have the A, then we have 
a move, a pose is a move, isn't it? Or a proposal, even. Um, but not entirely. So we've taken some of the letters off. We're taking the last letter off to propose. We've taken the last letters off and got propo and put them with the A and we get a word suitable. Okay. Hopefully that made sense or at least some of it did. Um, it's the case with all these things. You know, if you're starting out with cryptic crosswords, the, the best thing you can do really is sit with yesterday's cryptic crossword and the answer and try and deconstruct it a bit. Um, and also another strategy is definitely, as I said before, start with uh, the anagram. Try and find the anagram clues. There's a few in this crossword. And if you started with, if you looked up for those types of words that indicate an anagram, you know, like some sort of destruction or confusion or whatever, then in this crossword you would have had maybe four or five potential um, clues identified. And then they would give you letters for the other for the other clues to help you maybe get somewhere with them. Um, And then... You know, it's just a matter of taking some, over time you'll realize the words that are very often are abbreviated and then you'll rec- start recognizing other words. But look as well for those those position words that indicate some sort of wordplay going on. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I love doing these things. Like I say, it's been almost two weeks now since I started the channel. Um, I do these and I do some shorts as well, which is like a clue for one clue a day. And I'm working on a more comprehensive guide to cryptic crosswords. It'll be more of a series of, of videos. But if you did like this, please do like and do subscribe. It really helps me. And if you have any suggestions for the sort of things you'd like to see, please let me know. Um, I'm open to all suggestions. Just leave a comment below. And uh, yeah, thank you. See you next time.